we're going to be learning a bit about chemistry here. But before we start learning about chemistry, I think it's important to learn what chemistry actually is. So chemistry uh, is actually uh, the study of the science of matter. And so what's matter? Well, matter is everything um, that has a mass, but it's, it's, it's everything that exists uh, anywhere, really, anything that is. So, for example, you're made of matter. All of your blood, your bones, your skin, your hair, that's stuff, so it's made of matter. Uh, the whole planet and everything on it is made of matter. Everything around you, the tables and chairs and windows, uh, the, the trees, uh, the grass, all the animals on Earth, that's all made of matter. The sun itself is made up of matter, as is the moon, as are all the stars in the sky, and all of the extrasolar or planets around all of the stars in the sky. So everything is made up of matter. Um, chemistry is actually also about what happens when molecules or matter is mixed together. So if you've got two liquids, the liquids are both matter. If you mix them together, sometimes nothing will happen, but sometimes something called a chemical reaction will happen. And that's also what chemists study. So chemistry is the science of matter. Now, if we're going to be talking about matter, one of the first places to start is to talk about the states of matter. So there are three states of matter. There's solid, liquid, and gas. So all matter is actually made up of teeny tiny particles. These are sometimes molecules. There's sometimes things called atoms. Um, but it, all matter is made up of tiny things, and those tiny things behave differently depending on what state of matter the thing is in. So if you have a solid, for example, an ice cube, then you'll see that in a solid, all of the particles in the solid here, they're all very close together, they're packed very tight, and they're in a very regular arrangement. They actually vibrate slightly, um, but that's what the particles in a solid actually look like. Now the next state of matter is a, a liquid here. So liquids, the particles in a liquid, they're, they're still quite close together, but they can move around each other quite a bit. Um, and they're not as tightly packed as they were in a solid. Now the, th the uh, third state of matter is, is, a, is gas. So we can have a solid or a liquid or a gas. And when um, matter is in a gaseous state, the little teeny tiny particles actually zoom all over the place really fast. They're quite um, well separated um, and they've got actually quite a lot of energy. So the three states of matter are solid, liquid and gas. Now actually things can change between states of matter. So again if we talk about water, water you can have solid water and that's called ice, but if solid water melts then it turns into a liquid. And if liquid water, so the stuff that comes out of your tap, if you boil it, um, you can actually make it evaporate so that it turns into a gas. And we know liquid uh, or gaseous water is steam. But then actually, if you have uh, water as a gas, so steam, maybe in your shower, that steam can condense and it condense back into a liquid. And that's why you get um, little drips of uh, liquid running down the side of your shower if you have a really hot shower. But then also, if you've got liquid water and you wanted to make it frozen, make some ice again, all you'd have to do is put it back in the freezer, and then you can turn liquid water into solid water by freezing it. So there are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and, and gas. So it's gas, liquid, solid. And we can go between the states of matter, solid to liquid by melting, liquid to gas by evaporating, gas to liquid by condensing, and liquid to solid by freezing. So that's all about the states of matter, and that's a really important concept in chemistry. So when we're talking about chemistry, we should also talk about what happens when things are mixed together, because that's what chemists do quite a bit. So there's two things that can happen when materials are mixed together. One thing is you can mix materials together and they can actually stay separate. So if I um, mix some sand with some water, they won't stay, the sand won't dissolve, it'll kind of sink to the bottom of the water and you'll be able to see the sand at the bottom and the water at the top. So actually, if you can mix two things together and they don't you know, dissolve in each other, those two things, are, it's called immiscible. So if you put sand in water, the sand is immiscible in water, which means it doesn't mix. But some things, if you mix them together, um, they mix together and they stay together. 
So if things, you, when you mix them together, they stay you know, undiscernible from each other. Um, they're called miscible. So if I mix, for example, here, I've got some um, sugar. If I mix some sugar and some water, I'll get you know, water and sugar mixed together. And um, the sugar is miscible in water or it's you know, mixable in water. And in fact, when I mix two things together and they stay together, what happens is I'll create something called a solution. So a solution is when two things are mixed together and they, they basically stay mixed. Now solutions of, um, you can actually get solutions of two liquids can be mixed together. So um, water and cordial is a good example of that. Solutions can be two solids, uh, two solids mixed together. Normally what happens there, for example, a metal, an alloy, you can mix two liquid metals. So you can uh, melt two liquids, mix them together. And then when, when they, turn, when they uh, cool down, turn back into a solid, they'll be mixed together. That's something called an alloy. You can actually get um, two gases mixed together too. This example I've got here is an example of a solid and a liquid mixed together to form a solution. So when you mix a solid, a liquid, sorry, and a solid together, then the liquid and the solid actually have two separate names. So the liquid part of a solution is called a solvent. So in this case, water is my solvent in this solution. And the solid part of a solution is called, the thing that dissolves in the, in the solvent is called a solute. So then those two things together, if I mix water and sugar together, I get a solution of water and sugar. So solutions are, are when two things are mixed together. Now, of course, some things um, form solutions. Um, and basically what happens when they form solutions is the thing has to be soluble. So here, you know, sugar is soluble in water. But again, if I mixed um, sand with water, the sand would be insoluble. So I just want to talk about some of the words, I suppose, or spell some of the words that aren't uh, on this page. So I've talked about solutions and they're made up of a solvent and a solute and together they form a solution. Um, I also use the word um, miscible. So miscible means two things can be mixed together. There's a dot there too. Miscible is when two things can be mixed together. Im. Immiscible is when two things can't be mixed together. So miscible is they can be mixed together. Uh, that's can be mixed together. And immiscible is when things can't be mixed together. I'll also talk about two, uh, two other words which aren't on, on the page. And one of them is soluble. So something is soluble if it basically dissolves in something else. So this sugar is soluble because it dissolves in water. And insoluble means that something doesn't dissolve in water. So put the little ticks and crosses again. So soluble means it does dissolve and insoluble means it does not dissolve. So there again, you know, another couple of words and they relate to uh, mixing materials together when we're studying chemistry. Now, when chemists have mixed materials together or they find some materials that are mixed, often they want to separate those mixtures again. And there's a few ways to separate mixtures. So a good example I've got here, or the first example I'll talk about here, is magnetic separation. So here I've got some sulfur, so that's just a yellow powder. I've also got some iron filings, so it's just a little bit of metal. And if I mix those two th things together, I'll have a mixture of iron and sulfur powder. And, I, and how will I get them apart? So basically the answer to that is I'll get a magnet. And magnetic separation involves using a magnet to collect the magnetic parts of a mixture and separating them from the non-magnetic parts. So in this example, iron is magnetic and sulfur is not magnetic. So when I put the magnet over the top of the uh, mixture, the iron comes out of the mixture and the sulfur stays in the mixture. So that's one way of separating things. Another way of separating materials is via something called filtration. 
So let's say I had a mixture of sand and water. What I would do is I'd get a little bit of um, filter paper. So this is this, this um, triangular tunnel here, this, uh, this little triangular uh, cone here. Um, and what I would do is put this, it's made of paper, this is called filter paper. I'd put my mixture of sand and water into this filter paper. What happens then is water, the water particles are a lot smaller than sand. So the water particles actually drip down here and all the water collects down the bottom. But the sand, because it doesn't fit through the filter paper, all the sand stays up the top in this filter paper. So after I've filtered something, I end up with the thing which doesn't go through the filter paper at the top and the thing which does go through the filter paper at the bottom. So in this example, I've filtered sand out of sandy water. So that's another way to separate mixtures, that's filtration. Another way to separate mixtures is something called sieving. It's, it's fairly similar for, to filtration, but you can do it with two solids. So here I've got some sand and I've got some gravel. So gravel is big, sand is small, and this um, sieve, so this is a sieve here, this thing here. So this sieve, this has got holes in it, which are big enough to allow the sand to go through. Sand goes through here and collects down the bottom, but the gravel is too big to go through. So after I've sieved it, the sand's at the bottom and then the gravel's at the top, and again, I've separated a mixture. Yet another way to separate mixtures is by something called evaporation. So here, in fact, I've in this um, container here, I've actually got a mixture of salt and water. And so how do I get the salt out of the water? It, it's, it's soluble salt, so it's dissolved in the water. So how can I get the salt out? Well, what I could do there is um, basically I could apply a source of heat here. So this is probably, you know, this is probably a bit of a, a bit of fire. Um, that's my drawing of fire there. So you put fire onto the bottom of this container and heat up the water and the salt. What will actually happen then is the water vapor will travel up um, into the air. And you can actually collect that some, somehow up here if you want to do. But the water vapor will travel up here into the air, but the salt particles, they'll all stay down the bottom of this container because they won't turn from a solid to a gas. So the water actually changed from a liquid to a gas and that's how we were able to collect the water, but the salt will stay as a solid down the bottom. Um, and then we'll be able to separate the salt from the water. So <clears throat> um, by evaporation is another way that um, we can separate a mixture. Now, when we're talking about chemistry, it's also really important to talk about um, changes that matter can undergo. And one type of change that matter can undergo, or one of the two types, is physical changes. So physical changes are basically what happens when um, the particles that make up the matter, they don't change at all. So this is a really great example here of um, a physical change. And what I've got is I've got on one side, I've got some solid, maybe let's call it orange juice. I've got some solid orange juice. On the other side, I've got some liquid orange juice. Importantly, it's still orange juice, so it hasn't changed. <clears throat> but these two things are clearly very different. So one is a solid block and the other is a liquid. A physical change, a great example of a physical change, is, is a change of state. So you can see here, when I apply heat to my solid, it turns into a liquid, but it's still orange juice. So orange juice as a solid if I heat it, it turns into a liquid. It's a, very, it's a different thing, it looks different, it behaves differently. You can pour a liquid, you can't pour a solid. Uh, if you get hit with uh, an ice ball, it'll probably hurt. Um, or if someone tipped a, a glass of orange juice on you, it wouldn't hurt, you'd probably be a bit uncomfortable. So they're very different, but they're made of the same things. So a physical change is a change that occurs when um, you know, there's been a change, but the particles that make up the two things remain the same. You know, another example of, a, of a, a physical change is, of course, freezing. So when I get liquid orange juice and I freeze it, I can turn it in, back into a um, solid, solid material here, so the icy pole, but it's still orange juice. So there's two types of physical changes. Other physical changes are um, breaking a glass. You can actually melt glass and get it back together. You know, it's quite easy to, to fix broken glass, you know, scrunching up a bit of paper 
and then unfolding it again. Um, you can dissolve something, you can dissolve salt in water and it's quite easy to get the salt back out of the water. So that's one type of change. So a physical change is one that the two things, the, the, the particles that make up the material or the matter don't change um, and it's quite easy to go between them. So this one you can just heat it and cool it and heat it and cool it. You could make that change over and over again really easily. The other type of change in chemistry is something called a chemical change. And what happens here is the actual particles that make up the thing do change. So a great example, and one that I'd actually recommend you um, try at home, so convince your parents to try at home, is get some vinegar. You just buy it from the shop, um, just buy a bottle of vinegar, and get some bicarb soda or bicarbonate of soda, or baking soda it's sometimes called, and mix them together. Uh, it's actually really good fun. You get a whole lot of bubbles formed. And those bubbles, so here's a whole lot of bubbles, those bubbles are a new thing. They're carbon dioxide gas. So I can start with a liquid vinegar and a solid bicarb of soda and I can make bubbles of carbon dioxide, a gas. So I can make what's called a chemical change. And a chemical change is a change which makes something new. So the carbon dioxide over here, that wasn't in either of these two things. We've, we've um, changed it. So we've, we've had a chemical change. And if I just got some carbon dioxide, it'd be really hard to turn it back into vinegar or bicarb of soda. So it's because a chemical reaction has taken place. Um, chemical changes are, are also they're really hard to reverse. So you know that's what that means. Uh, great examples of chemical changes are, are things like yeah, chemical reactions like this, but also um, burning. If you burn some wood or burn some paper, it's really hard to get you know the ash that's left over back to wood or paper. It's really really hard to do. That's because you've made something new. Now you burn wood, you actually make um, you make ash and you make a bit of carbon dioxide. So chemical changes, you make a new substance and they're really hard to reverse. Another great example of a chemical change is actually one that if you've got a gas um, cooktop at home and you turn it on and light the cooktop, you've got a gas barbecue at home and you turn it on, what you're actually doing is you're burning a natural gas called methane. So methane is, is just a, a, it's a gas, but it's really flammable, you can burn it and you burn it in um, oxygen. So there's oxygen in the air. If you get some methane and you give it a, a, a little bit of uh, heat, it'll start burning in the air and it'll, it'll uh, emit, it'll actually, um, it'll emit, a light will come out of this reaction um, and it'll also, uh, something else that'll happen when you burn methane is heat will, will happen. But that's got nothing to do with the matter that makes it up. So we've got some methane over here, and then if we mix that with oxygen in a chemical reaction, we actually get uh, two different things. So we get carbon dioxide and water. So if you burn a gas in oxygen, so these two things join together, they actually form two different things. They form carbon dioxide and water. And it's really hard to get this carbon dioxide and this water back to oxygen and methane. But also something really interesting about this picture is you'll notice that the, the, the number of balls at the top here, so the number of balls on this side and the number of balls on this side are actually very, very similar. And this happens in all chemical changes. So what happens is we don't, we never, in chemistry, we never make anything um, totally new. We actually just rearrange the little teeny tiny particles in things. So this is a good example. So we've got one black ball here, and it's actually, a, a, it's called an atom of carbon, and we've got another black ball here, and there's no other black balls. But this black ball over here, this actually had one, two, three, and actually got another one there. It's got four white balls joined onto it. And over here, there's four white balls. So those four white balls are hydrogen atoms. So that's what the H stands for. And we've also over on this at, at the start, we started with one, two, three, four um, balls of oxygen. And you know, that's the little O. And over here, how many have we got? One, two, three, four balls of oxygen. So what happens in all chemical changes really is the things that we start with, uh, and the things that we start with are actually called reactants. 
reactants, not very good writing, um, reactants, the things that we end with are actually called products. So the reactants, what's over, over on this side of the equation is actually the same as what's over here, but they just rearrange. So chemical changes are changes where we make new things. So we've made carbon dioxide and water here from methane and oxygen. Um, they're really hard to reverse, but they actually involve just a rearrangement of the particles involved in the um, chemical reaction or the chemical change. That's all about chemical changes.